Welcome. This is the video for you if you like chicken. Uh huh. And if you're a fan of your crock pot, because these are the best crock pot chicken recipes, and these are ones you can make ahead as freezer meals, which just makes it that much easier. I don't think it does get better than that because it just makes it so easy and my life is perfect because I have the best chicken crock pot freezer meals. Your life is perfect? My life is perfect because I have chicken <laughs> crock pot freezer meals. You just ask me and I'll tell you all about it. I'm joking. My yes. life is far from perfect as is Charlotte's as is anybody here. But thinking of what I have to make for supper is not an issue at my house because I have them all in my freezer. That is one part of my life that I feel pretty darn good about. I would say that the meal aspect of my life is as close to perfection as it could possibly be, thanks to freezer meals. So yes. I'm very grateful about that. I'm incredibly grateful for freezer meals and we wanna share that with you because A, they are easy, B, they're chicken, C, they're crock pot, and D, their perfection. And <laughs> these ones that we're sharing today are the best. They're going to change your mind if you're sort of on the fence about slow cooker meals because Christy is not a huge slow cooker fan. However, even these recipes she'll do in the slow cooker. Yeah, there are some that are meant for the slow cooker and these are some of those for sure. So the first one that we're going to share with you is a pineapple teriyaki chicken. This one is like bursts of flavor mm -hmm. and color, which means it's healthy. Yes. In order to make this as a freezer meal, you're going to put some raw cubed chicken breasts into a freezer bag. Then you're gonna add in some teriyaki sauce, a little bit of water, some brown sugar, some minced garlic. We just use ours from a jar. It's really easy that way. Then some peeled and roughly chopped carrots, some drained pineapple chunks from a can, red and green peppers that are seeded and chopped, and some drained sliced water chestnuts. You're gonna squish everything together right there in the bag, and then you're gonna try to get as much air as you can out of the bag so that you don't get freezer burn. Then you're gonna seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to make this, all you do is thaw it, dump the entire bag contents into your slow cooker, and this just needs to cook on low for three to four hours. You can serve this over rice and your entire meal is done. It's so flavorful. And like Christy said, this one can also be cooked in the oven if you prefer. Now, the great thing about this for the slow cooker is if you've got somewhere that you need to be, this can be cooking while you're gone. If you've got things you need to do, this can just be, you know, the set it and forget it thing about the slow cooker. However, if it works better for you to just have a short cooking window and you're gonna get home, quickly put this in your oven. Whether you cook this in the oven or the slow cooker, it is really just good. It really, really is. This next recipe was made for the slow cooker. It is addictive chicken and it couldn't get any simpler than this. In our freezer bag, we are going to add our chicken breasts that are boneless and skinless, a package of dry ranch seasoning. Now, if you are like us and you buy this stuff in bulk, then you're gonna add in three tablespoons. You're going to add in a block of cream cheese and in a separate bag, you're going to put in some crispy chopped bacon and some shredded cheddar cheese. You're going to take out the excess air from both of those bags. You're going to seal these up and staple those bags together. So on the day of cooking, you can just thaw them and you have everything that you need to make this awesome dish. You're going to put your large bag items like the chicken into your slow cooker, cook on low for three to five hours. Then you're going to shred it up and then you're going to stir in your bacon bits and your cheese 
If you want to get really fancy, you're going to chop up a couple of green onions and put those on top and serve this. This is terrific on buns. It's really nice on rice. We've even had this with potatoes and it is just made for the slow cooker. I'm telling you. I feel like this is kind of got fl the flavors of baked potato, mm -hmm. but with chicken. So it's almost like if you made a baked potato. A chicken baked potato. Chicken, yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's nice on it, potatoes. It is nice with potatoes. Yeah, it really is. When I was choosing the recipes for this video, I have to tell you that I actually had a really hard time, especially because it says the best chicken <laughs> crock pot recipes. And we have so many that qualify as the best for real. And not just because we're biased, like. No, they really, really <laughs> are that terrific. And she was like, should we do this one or this one? I don't know, they're both so good. Should we do this one or this one? I don't know, it's, they're both so good. I'm happy with the selection that we have. We can't include all of them. No, so for this, the debate was between chicken taco soup, which one, oh, spoiler alert here, uh -huh. or chicken noodle soup. Now, chicken noodle soup, honestly, if this was a winter video, it, it would have probably beat out the chicken taco soup just because it's way faster to make, even though chicken taco soup is fast enough, but it's got those comfort meal like things about it. And the, it, ha it hardly has any ingredients, but yet no. it's so flavorful. So simple. So chicken noodle soup would have won had it been winter. Since it's not, chicken taco soup edged it out. <laughs> it did, but honestly, this is still a pretty darn good winter soup yes. if you wanted to. Because of, for me, it's all the things that you put in with it. And it's hearty. It and, is. You know, but it's really nice for summer. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add some boneless, skinless chicken breasts, chopped onion, some chili style beans, black beans that are drained and rinsed, some kernel corn. You can either drain it from a can or you can use frozen some tomato sauce, a can of beer, which is going to help tenderize the chicken and add to the flavor, some canned diced tomatoes, some diced chilies, and a bit of taco seasoning. You're going to, again, just squish everything right there in the bag to combine it. You're gonna get your air out, seal it, and freeze it. This is one that, again, you're going to thaw it and then dump that into your slow cooker. This one can be on low for anywhere from four to seven hours. The chicken is going to be fully cooked at the four hour mark, but if you're going to be away from home for longer and you need it to cook for seven, that'll be okay too, because you've got a lot of liquid in there. So your chicken won't overcook. I did forget to mention that you are going to add in some chicken broth when you go to make this. You don't want to add that into your bag because this has so many ingredients in it. It gets really, really full. <laughs> your bag gets way too thick and takes up too much space in your freezer. Now we have experimented with it and it will still close, mm -hmm. but it just takes up so much space. This is when you want to do freezer meals with a friend. <laughs> if you want to put all of your, your broths into your soups while you are making them and you totally can. But yeah, you might need a second pair of hands. To hold that bag open. Or we sometimes put it in a juice jug or another container. It fits really nice. Mm -hmm. So this is one that you can shred the chicken up when it's done. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a different version of this recipe and that is that we do like this as a soup and when we do it as a soup, you know, we garnish it with like some sour cream and some cheddar cheese and you can just get creative with your toppings. Like sometimes we do the tortilla strips that mm -hmm. are crisped up. So yeah, this is a great one, but my kids prefer this one in wraps. And so when we do it like that, we don't add the chicken broth. Right. We just add the bag contents. And the nice thing about it is, okay, for those of you that don't know, Christy is my neighbor. We have been getting together to make freezer meals for over 12 years. And before that, we did them on our own because she hadn't moved in yet. And right. it was very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how sad it was because I hadn't met her yet, right. but it was very <laughs> sad. And now when we do our freezer meals, we do them every three months and we make enough to last both our families for the next three months. So when we do that, 
If it's a tried and true recipe, like our chicken taco soup, we make four so that we each go away with two. Right. That means that for me, I can use one of them as a soup. Right. And one of them for in the wraps. So it's kind of perfect because I really get two meals out of this one, which is nice and versatile. It totally is. And at our house, we always do it with the soup, mostly because I forget that you do that with, <laughs> right. with the tortillas, but also I really like it as a soup. Like I love this as a soup. And so, and I like adding like the sour cream and the, the mix-ins and the crunched up tortilla chips. I really, really do prefer to eat it that way. So I just never even think of that. We have that. And I was recently in Mexico and there was a chicken taco soup or it was an enchilada soup, which we also have, mm -hmm. but it was just that. And then all of the mixings were kind of off to the side. And I don't know how many people I saw take the soup, ignore the mixings, the mix ins and go back to their table. And I wanted to stop them and be like, <laughs> No, you're like missing half of the awesomeness of this soup by not sprinkling a few taco chips on it. Maybe they had their reasons. Maybe they knew it was there and didn't like it. I kind of think they just missed it. They didn't realize. They didn't realize. Not used to having chicken taco soup. Maybe. You know what else is really amazing in this is diced avocado. Mm-hmm. Really good. After the freezing, not yes, before yes. the freezing. This next crock pot recipe is something that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being a crock pot recipe and it is crock pot barbecue drumsticks. Now stick with me here because this recipe is dynamite. We're going to get our drumsticks into our large freezer bag. We're going to mix some seasonings together in a little bowl. We're going to add together some paprika, some cumin and a bit of salt. We're going to take our spice mixture, dump it in on top of our drumsticks and mix it around so it's nice and evenly coated. You can even shake it around like a good old shake and bake. We're going to add in some minced garlic right from a jar with one cup of barbecue sauce. It can be your favorite barbecue sauce, whatever you like to use. We like to use what is on sale. And then in another bag, we are going to put a three quarters cup, which is pretty much the remainder of your bottle usually, into a medium sized freezer bag. That's the quart size. Now, if you are like us as well and you hate waste, you can take a little bit of vinegar. I used cider vinegar, like a tablespoon or two, and I put it back into that bottle for the barbecue sauce in that empty bottle and I shook it around and then I could dump more of it into that little bag. It gets the rest of that barbecue sauce out of there and I feel better than about discarding that. And barbecue sauce already has a little bit of vinegar in it anyway. So then we're going to zip up those meals after we get all of our air out and then we're going to staple those together. When you go to cook these, you're going to cook your drumsticks, so just the large bag, goes into your slow cooker and you are gonna cook these on low for four to six hours. And then here's where the magic of this recipe happens is because you're going to take them out and put them on a foil lined baking sheet and you're going to baste them with some of that extra barbecue sauce and then you're going to broil them for one to five minutes. You're gonna keep an eye on it because nobody wants burnt <laughs> chicken drumsticks. You just want to crisp them up. You pull them out, you turn them over, baste them again, back in under the broiler. So these are tender because they've been in the slow cooker, but they're a little crispy and wonderfully sticky and they're all the things that you would expect out of barbecue drumsticks. Now, I have to tell you that we were not a drumstick family prior to this recipe. We had tried a few recipes over the years and my family was always just like, yeah, no. And even my husband, like, I love making appetizers, so I would make chicken wings or drumsticks as appetizers, and he was like, I think those are more something that I should order in a restaurant. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, funny! He just, I was not, I would not figured out how to be good at this until this recipe. <laughs> this recipe turned it around. Everyone in our family loves this, and I have to say, I don't normally eat drumsticks, but for this recipe, I make an exception, and I look forward to it. Like, you're right, it's the, the combination of 
the tenderness from the slow cooker with like the cr crisp and crunch from the broiling and then that extra barbecue sauce and it's just all the right things at all the right time and it's so good. We need to add this to the list to our next freezer meal mega session. Like as, as I read this recipe and as we were talking about it, I just thinking about it, I'm like, we need to eat this soon. It's such a nice summer one. Oh, it's great. Let's yeah. do that. Let's do that. You can just serve this with like raw veggies and dip and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And actually, if as your dip, you're just using like a simple ranch dressing or whatever, then that's actually nice with the drumsticks as oh, well. Yeah. So, oh, this is, yes. Yes, this definitely should be in it's the best. In the best. Fried chicken recipes. If you've never done freezer cooking before, a nice thing is to like double some of your favorite recipes, have one tonight and freeze the other. That's a good way to just dip your toe in. Once you've discovered how nice it is to have those meals ready for you, then maybe you're ready to make your first stack. And a really nice number to start for your first stack is five recipes, doubling that to mm -hmm. make 10. Yes. And so we will often share five recipes in a video. I couldn't choose. And I was like, how do I pick between, you know, this and that? And so it was kind of between the, the chicken taco soup or the chicken noodle soup or that lady's chicken. And Christy was like, you like, it has to be that. It's the ultimate chicken, like chicken crock pot. Like it really is. It's and we recently had this like within the last week we had this at our house and there were no leftovers, of mm -hmm. course, like it's just it just goes and the sauce from it is great on you whatever with, sides like rice. Or it's potatoes best with or, rice, but yes, yes and absolutely. we did have rice this mm -hmm. time. And it was one of those super, super busy days and it was just so nice to like have it done. And then I just made minute rice. So it's like in five minutes, like, here you go, supper. Here's supper. <laughs> it was awesome. And I have to say that after I picked that lady's chicken, then we were talking about it and we were like, oh, barbecue shredded chicken is really oh, like I probably know. the very best for me like it's probably my personal very best chicken crock pot but it has barbecue and so did the drumsticks right. and so whatever that's you didn't need to know all the thought stuff that went into choosing these what you did need to know is that we could not do this video without telling you how to make that lady's chicken yes so into your large freezer bag, you're gonna add your boneless, skinless chicken breasts or chicken thighs, then some Russian dressing. And if you can't find Russian dressing, cause it's nearly impossible to find now, you can use Catalina. Then some apricot jam and dry onion soup mix. We buy ours in bulk. So we use three tablespoons or you can use a packet. Then you squish all of that together. It doesn't even have to be that well combined because your apricot jam is kind of gonna melt as it heats in the slow cooker and then the sauce will combine more. Then you're going to of course get your air out, seal it, freeze it, and this one just again, dump right into the slow cooker. Oh yeah. And you know, it's ideal if it's thawed, but if it's just thawed enough to get it out of the bag then that works too and this one you can cook for four to six hours on low and like we were saying with the sauce you want to spoon that over your rice or your potatoes you, <laughs> you could eat that sauce with a spoon really you really could you really could and this isn't one that you're going to probably want to have every single night of the week because it is rich and it's it's not maybe the very healthy it's not the healthiest but that is actually okay if you can get your kids to eat that's a win. Yeah. <laughs> like we, well, our one-year-old grandson lives with us. He's he actually he's over one and a half now. And he is, we ha have had some picky eaters. Some of our kids have been extremely picky. In fact, his mom is our pickiest, but he takes the cake. Like he, <laughs> it is, um, it's a good day if you can get him to eat anything. Uh, and yes, 
if you're gonna put comments in the comments below, we've, we've got an appointment coming with an occupational therapist. We know there are sensory issues. It runs in his family. Like we, you know, we know the things and we're doing the things and we're working with a doctor and the, like everyone's aware, but it is a win if we can get this child to eat anything. It doesn't matter if it's got apricot jam and Russian dressing. <laughs> <laughs> And the day that we, you know, made this, we definitely offered this to him. He, he had one bite, but you know, <laughs> like, that's all right. It was there was protein involved. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if you love chicken and you love crock pot, then the recipes are in the description down below. You can go check those out and maybe make your first or your fiftieth freezer stack. Get these done so that whenever you have the kind of day that you need to use your slow cooker, you've got things all ready to go and you don't have to do your grocery shopping, mm -hmm. you don't have to do your chopping or any prep. All you have to do, you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to think about it. All you have to do is thaw, dump, turn the switch. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of cooking. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited for you to get started and let us know what you think of these recipes. Happy cooking!